Right now on Good Morning Northwest, a large fire in White Swan dubbed the Slide Ranch Fire broke out over the weekend and destroyed 16 homes. We have the latest. And fire is causing people to evacuate their homes. We have where you can go for emergency shelter, plus what the Red Cross suggests you bring if you have to go. And the Franklin County Sheriff says rural areas are suffering from dead zones, making it difficult for them to access emergency services. What he suggests will fix the problem. And with the fire burning in Yakima County, I'll have an update on acreage containment and evacuations coming up. This is Apple Valley News Now. Good morning, Northwest. On your side. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for Good Morning Northwest. I'm Jessica Jalal. And I'm Jill Sperling. You're watching Good Day Columbus on ABC6. Breaking news to start us off this morning, a shooting in the short north. We've got our Jeremiah Wilcox there gathering information. You're looking at live pictures there. More on this coming up. And it's the Cucho Show, the crew star forward with a hat trick last night. All that as the crew says goodbye to a longtime teammate. Highlights ahead. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Good Day Columbus. It's Sunday, June 23rd. I'm Tom Bosco. And I'm Kate Seifert in for Stephanie Chaynock. And I'm meteorologist Sarah Converse. We start with breaking news this morning. Columbus police confirmed 10 people have been shot in the short north. Thanks for joining us. I'm Kristen McFarland. Now you can take a look at that scene right here. Our 10 TV crew has been on scene for a couple hours now. 10 TV's Tara Jabor is live out there with what we know so far. Tara. Breaking news from NBC4. Right now, we're following breaking news in the short north. Columbus police tell us a shooting has happened in the area. Ten people have been shot, one fighting for his life. Live from Siouxland's news source, this is KTIV News 4. The uh, river rose to historic levels uh, that we've never seen here before, and uh, it, it's hard to deal with that much water. Uh, it's, it's, it's a monumental undertaking. Floodwaters ravage northwest Iowa as the region is inundated with several inches of heavy rain. Communities scrambling to get their residents to high and dry ground. Neighbors and volunteers offering help when and where they can. Tonight we bring you full coverage of those floods across Siouxland. Thanks for joining us tonight for News 4 at 10. I'm Katie Koppel. Now before we get to the coverage from the ground tonight, we start with the question that I think most people are asking, Kat. Right now, parts of Iowa are underwater. A look at the widespread devastation and how the state is stepping in to help. Shut down at Sailorville. The precautions being taken right now before water levels rise in central Iowa. The heat and humidity ramp up today. We are weather aware. When we cool down and when the next round of storms will be coming up in your Storm Team 8 forecast. Abortion rights take center stage on the campaign trail. How the issue could shape the 2024 presidential race. KCCI 8 News This Morning starts right now. Good morning, straight up 6 o'clock as we start off this Monday morning when Northwestern Iowa just got dumped on and they're dealing with flooding. But here in Central Iowa, we're getting ready for heat. And that's not safe either. In fact, we're weather aware because the heat index is going to be in the triple digits mm -hmm. today, John. Yeah, with this type of heat, you need to plan for it. You need to take breaks, stay hydrated. Live from the WMTV studios, 15 News at 10 starts now. Good evening. Tonight, the very latest on a tornado outbreak. We now know at least six tornadoes touched down across our viewing area in a span of four hours yep. yesterday. First alert meteorologist Brian Dukes was here through it all, joins us now. Walk us through where those touchdowns happened. Yeah, Lee, and they were pretty intense. Anywhere from an EF0 up to an EF2 as we got into the Rock County area. That was the strongest tornado so far. We're following relief efforts to assist those impacted by this weekend's tornadoes. That's all coming up on News 3 Now at 10. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Jalen Banks. A confirmed EF2 tornado wrecked havoc and knocked out power for thousands in Janesville. Officials say so far there have been no reports of injuries. This is Dakota News Now, your first alert station. 
And at 9 o'clock, good evening everyone. I'm Brian Allen. I'm Andrea Anderson. As flooding continues to impact communities throughout South Dakota, Minnesota, and Iowa, it is important to remember the dangers that flood water can hold. Hannah Eckwall in studio tonight to tell us what we can be doing to stay safe. Hello, Hannah. Right now on WCCO News, teetering on the side of caution. A major dam in Blue Earth County partially collapses. How emergency crews are responding to the new flooding concerns and reaction from the community. And as some way for water levels to rise even further. It's a wild thing to, to see that we've had this much rain. What's being done to protect businesses and homes tonight? Then, a next weather alert for tonight's storms. Then it clears. I'll let you know how long we go without rain. Plus, is a pesky seasonal problem. It's not so much holding back their seeds. Being put on hold by Mother Nature. Good question. This is a WCCO and CBS News Minnesota next weather alert. Right now, rising floodwaters are pushing a Minnesota dam to its limit, putting a nearby community on edge. Plus, thousands are already feeling flooding impacts. How you can help with relief efforts. And our team coverage looks at the response as more severe weather moves across parts of Minnesota and into Wisconsin. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. We do have a lot to cover during this next weather alert, and that's why we have team coverage for you this evening. Coming up on KGTC News at 10, flooding concerns sweeping across the region. Here at home, Freeborn County leaders considering declaring a state of emergency. Plus, Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds announcing aid for Alamakee County after severe storms and flooding. That's our life as well. That's our business. That's our livelihood. There's no stopping. And jarring video near Mankato where a dam is in what officials are calling imminent failure condition. Your 10 o'clock news starts now. Live from your local news leader, this is KTTC News. A first alert day continues tonight across southeast Minnesota and northeast Iowa well, with the potential for storms overnight. Good evening, I'm Brock Burgi. And I'm Caitlin Alexander. We begin tonight with Chief Meteorologist Nick Jansen with what you can expect throughout the night and into your morning commute. You're watching KEYC News Now. Kind of like a site of Ni Niagara Falls. That's what we're in right now, is trying to figure out how do we recover from this. Our contingency plans are all in place if the waters were to come up. How are we going to fix this? What should we do to make this dam work? Is it better to get a new one? Is it better to fix this? And those are all questions they're going to have to confront. And they also uh, gave us kind of the level of rise that might happen if a complete failure occurred. And it falls within the models that we have that'll say it'll be, it will be okay here in Mankato. This isn't our first rodeo as far as flood mitigation efforts go. We're really asking people to, uh, to heed the closures that are in place around uh, the river. All lies today on the Rapidan Dam. In a state of imminent failure conditions, also a flood emergency is declared in North Mankato. Your local news starts right now. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us. A breaking news and developing story today all about flooding on the Rapidan Dam, a frightening sight this morning in southern Minnesota. The Rapidan Dam, over 100 years old, submerged by flooding river waters, experienced a partial failure this morning. Right now at 10, we're tracking an early round of showers and a couple of thunderstorms, still watching that overnight potential very closely. And the race to get ready for another round of severe weather. I'm Mike Biermeister here in Williams Bay, where we're talking with neighbors about cleanup and preparation for this next round of storms. And the new limits on football fans in Racine after a fight breaks out during the season opener for the Youth Summer League. Connecting you with Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and the world. This is TMJ4 News at 10. But we begin tonight with storms, a lightning packed line rolling through right now. Another strong system could be on the way. It's a good night to make sure your phone is charged and maybe bring that patio furniture inside, yeah. Kristen, and definitely put the batteries in the weather radio. Yes. With stories that matter to you, this is Fox 6 News at 10. Well, it's been crazy, but hey, it's Wisconsin. I deal with it. I've been here all my life. Now attend bracing for more severe weather after seven tornadoes hit Wisconsin. 
It seems as if things are different this year, but does the data back it up? We're going to dive into it. And our ring doorbell camera captures the moment an SUV is seen speeding away from Milwaukee police. We got a crew on the scene with the latest in this investigation. A home improvement contractor is accused of taking money and not finishing the work. The dozens of criminal charges he is facing tonight, plus the historic Milwaukee home he allegedly gutted. But we got to start at town in the storm center. Look at the lower right of your screen. We got the boxes up. New severe thunderstorm watches out there. Leading the way with important local coverage. WISN 12 News at 10 starts right now. Getting ready for the RNC. Strict security zones. Life inside comes with extreme restrictions. I think I've decided I'll stay home for those three days. The local company joining the job of safety. It's unique experience tackling events of this size. We will have an active role in the, in the well-being and safety of, of everything. The search for the next superintendent for Milwaukee Public Schools. Tonight, the delays before the board moved to consider candidates to lead the district. The woman widowed, scammed out of attending her late husband's funeral. Why uh, can't I go on the flight? I've got a ticket. The ticket costing nearly $1,000 just to find out it's fake. Plus, a new tool to help fight fires. The video showing how it helped lead to a rescue. I will never betray my badge. And the new group of graduates, a first for the Milwaukee County Sheriff. It's Milwaukee's biggest event of the summer, the Republican National Convention. Yeah, right now we are 20 days away. Connecting communities through your stories that inspire us. It's KGA 9 News. I'm Chance Seals with a look at some of today's top stories. This is First Alert Weather at 6. Storms started to fire up around the Black Hills region at around 1 p.m. today. Those storms have really started to get going this afternoon. Rapid City seeing one about an hour ago. Tonight on Coda Territory News at 10, community members all over Rapid City celebrate what they call Victory Day. We'll explain the history behind it. Plus, Rapid City as a reminder before you go out and water your lawn and garden during this hot stretch. And we'll show you the storm damage to people's property in parts of Coda Territory. Your news starts now. This is Coda Territory News at 10. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Phil Aldrich. And I'm Alicia Garcia. 27 News WKOW. Here's what's happening right now. Cleaning up after an EF2 tornado in Janesville. The power's back on, but a lot of damage remains. We're live at the center looking to help connect people to recovery resources. And as people continue to clean up across southern Wisconsin, high heat and humidity dominating today's forecast. I'll let you know exactly how long this will last and when we can see some more quiet weather continue on. And some voters won't have to brave the elements this November. We've got you covered on today's ruling from a Dane County judge allowing some people to vote electronically from home. We've got you covered. This is 27 News at 4. Thank you for joining us. I'm Amber Noggle. And I'm Caroline Dade. Tonight, the Janesville community is still picking up after an EF2 tornado touched down on Saturday. Funnel clouds in the sky and a reported tornado on the ground in eastern Iowa today. The severe weather we faced and the threats that continue. Selling now closed elementary schools for less than their assessed values, what the state auditor has done in a similar situation. And Congress may ground some drones. Why an Eastern Iowa Sheriff's Office says that could impact public safety. From your trusted local news source with your first alert forecast, KCRG TV 9 News at 10 starts now. A round of storms hitting eastern Iowa turning severe today with many people seeing this. Look in the middle of your screen in the upper part mm. in the sky. Mm -hmm. You'll see the formation of that funnel cloud. News 8 is your local election headquarters in our area. The results from today's primary election began pouring in not long after the polls closed at 9. Here's a look at the results posted by the Monroe County Board of Elections. One of the biggest races in Rochester pitted. Mesquite police says suspect for the murders of two convenience store clerks admitted to the crimes and they say he showed no remorse for murder. 
Los Dallas police are investigating a hit and run crash that killed a motorcyclist who was a father of four who was killed just minutes from his home. And a dangerous firefight at a Fort Worth home. Three firefighters injured. One is still in the hospital after flames got way too intense. Here for you, the news leader, Fox 4. Hello, I'm Steve Eager. It's 9 o'clock. Police say the man accused of murdering two convenience store clerks. At the 11 o'clock news on KTVU. Fox 2 starts. Now. We just want to put our words out there for uh, any other salon that uh, get to see this. Uh, just to be careful. And then uh, just uh, hope, uh, just keep an eye out. Tonight, owners of an East Bay nail salon upset and frustrated after customers ran off after receiving hundreds of dollars in beauty services. Similar to a diamond dash, the customers came in, spent hours at the salon. When they were asked to pay, they took off. Good evening, everyone. I'm Mike Meebach. And I'm Heather Holmes. The owner says this is not the first time that something like this has happened. From Tampa Bay's number one news station, this is the Fox 13 6 o'clock news. Good evening, I'm Allie Corey. And I'm Mark Wilson, glad to have you with us tonight. Right now at 6, the jury has spoken. Zephan Xavier murdered five women inside the Sebring SunTrust Bank five years ago. And today, a Highlands County jury recommended the death penalty for him. You're watching the best. Fox 10 News. Now, new at 10. What I was doing was I was exercising my rights as a Native American. Agreeing with this man's claim that he was in his rights, the violent attack he's accused in, and the damage they say it caused. Well, a calm night on the water at Tempe Town Lake and a mild night across the valley as far as the monsoon goes. Corey is tracking our next chance for storms. And a driver pulled over in Prescott. The punishment this underage driver received for her open container. Well, first at 10, a Chandler mother and daughter are found dead inside their condo. We brought this to you as a news alert last night.